Hello everyone and thanks very much for joining me on Dean the Vaping Biker. Today we've got a mod review, it's regulated and I think but I'm going to tell you what I think when we come to the to the end. But uh, today we're going to be looking at the Tesla Nano 120 watt. It's a funky looker, but how does it actually perform? Let's go straight into the up close. We can check out this. I'll give you a little bit of a tour around it, and then we'll come back up, and I'll give you my final thoughts. Let's get straight into it, shall we? Come on then. Alrighty, so here is the box overexposed to buggery, but there we go. Hopefully we get an idea. So um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this under camera, but this is a really nice little touch. All this kind of serious embossing with the uh, cogs and all that sort of stuff, it kind of gives you an indication of what's coming next. Now, obviously we do have the uh, kind of the artistic representation of the Nano 120 watt on the front there. And on the back, you do have a lot of information there. Steampunk style, which, you know, I'm not overly keen on that, but we'll talk about that a little bit later um but yeah you've got your your main bits and bobs there your color your scratch and sniff and all that sort of good stuff now then opening this bad boy up um nice and easy we've got a uh, we've got a fairly decent little uh, little manual there that does tell you a whole bunch of stuff it shows you the different colors that it comes in there on the left hand page there and uh, i think they do look quite funky i mean the looks are going to be massively subjective but uh, but yeah here is the beast. Now, this is going to be something that's going to work for some people and not for others. But uh, I'm going to tell you about this when we go back up top. But let's let's just stick to the facts, shall we, for the moment. Uh, Tesla have once again included their uh, their battery safety cards, so no batteries with uh, with stupid knackered wraps on them, and a QC card going on in there. And there's nothing else underneath the box. So this is the main event. This is what we've come to see. And I've got to say, I think. I, I, I want to talk about it, but I'll talk about it when we go up top. I'm going to stop myself. Very, very deep kind of engraving or etching going on around the outside of this. I'm not entirely sure how they've done it, whether it's CNC machined or etched or whatever, but it does look very, very striking indeed. Obviously, on this side, we do have the Tesla SIGS logo going along the side there, and that follows all the way around. And then on the other side, we have the Nano 120 watt there. And uh, whilst ordinarily, if this was all clean and plain, then these would stand out like a bastard. Because of the busyness of everything, I don't think they stand out too untoward. And on the front here, what we've got here is some more engraving slash etching, the up and down buttons. We've got the fire button that is on the slant there and is a nice clicky. If you've used uh, some of like the, the previous Tesla Nano and so on, the button is very, very similar and I really do like it. It's really nice and clicky really great size and I like this a lot. Now one of the extras they've included on this is this very physical um, off and on switch. Now I don't actually know, I haven't taken it apart to see if it actually physically cuts power or if it's just an internal switch that goes to the board. But either way, I really, really like it. I really do. It's just there's something satisfying about going, yes, no, that's on and there, and absolutely, that's off. So that just makes me very, very happy indeed. On the top here, we'll talk about some measurements when we go up top, but I've not had any issues with anything I've wanted to put on here. Uh, 24 mils have been absolutely fine. And then underneath there, we do have um, we do have the little CE mark and everything else. Now, because this is still the uh, the metal, it has a real solid feel to it. It's a weighty, solid feeling mod, and I really, really do like that. Now, then to open the door, nice and easy. All you've got to do is pull that out. A little click brings it out, and then. Uh, it just pops up. No spring loaded or anything like that, but it does just pop up. Now underneath there, you may see, I don't know if you're going to be able to see these, uh, the uh, plus and the minus symbol, but there are some right at the bottom there. I had a little bit of an issue with a leaking atomizer, which I'll talk about another time, but happily the mod is still powering on through. So uh, on the underneath the uh, door there, it does tell us the orientation of the batteries. So obviously the one that's this one, that's going to be the plus facing up like so and uh, on this one minus so the minus is facing up like so closing it nice and easy a little bit of a push down obviously it has the resistance of the batteries there um, push that down and then flick it in and that's how it connects up and it's very very comfortable indeed now then if we click on to the uh, the on button 
There we go, we're on, we're live, which is great. None of this five clicks malarkey, and we are just straight in. Now, let's go up close and have a little look at this board, shall we? So then, very, very easy to manoeuvre. I really, really like this board. So up and down, as you would expect, going in 0.5 increments. Um, going down, obviously, we've got kind of a little bit of skipping. It doesn't, it, the accelerometer isn't brilliant on it, to be honest with you. It takes a little while to get wherever you're going. But uh, it does go all the way down to 7 watts and does round robin again all the way up to the maximum 120 watts. Now we'll come back to that in a moment. But uh, what we can do now is three clicks of the fire button. Let's pop an atomizer on. Should we do that? Let's do that. This is how I've been rocking it a lot, to be honest with you. And this is how I used it over Vape Jam. And this is the tank that leaked over everything. But I'll talk about that a bit, a bit later. Um, right, so here we go. So three clicks. One, two, three, and there we go, we're in. Now that is highlighted on the 0.37, which is the uh, the resistance of the coil that's in this tank at the moment. Now if I click that, we can add another resistance. So we can increase or decrease the resistance, which generally isn't something you really have to worry about doing, but uh, that is something that's an option. Fire button takes us out of that once again. Haven't turned my phone off, apologies for the ding. Um, three clicks takes us back to that highlighted section where we can then use the down button to uh, click over all of these different options. So the first one, it goes to the ohm symbol. Now this is where you would ordinarily lock it or unlock it. One, two, three. Oh, doing this under camera is a bit of a bugger. Right, the next is, um, it says here user. So we're on a user firing. By hitting the, uh, the, the fire button once again, we've got options of normal, soft, hard, or user. Now obviously normal is normal wattage, soft is a slower ramp up, hard is a big ramp up at the start. And user, if we click on to that, means that we can pre-programming I believe these are actually like 0.1 second increments but uh, what we can do is uh, or one second increments what we can do is increase or decrease that bar graph as you can see there to uh, to put it exactly where we want it so once we've got to the end of that there we go we're firing away we can then click on where you've got test at the bottom here the little arrow is on there reset which would reset it exactly wherever you want it. Going back to the end there, we're back onto the the uh, the test stage. Reset, and there we have the OK button. So we flick that, and there we go. We've got that kind of user curve going in there, which is brilliant if you're using Claptons or uh, some of the angrier wires. Now then, three clicks again. And this takes us to this section, which if you can see, it says KA for Canthal. Clicking onto it gives us Canthal, stainless steel, NI200, titanium, or TCR. Clicking into the TCR, I've set this to uh, 000. 000. Or 00092, because I've been using this with stainless. But uh, hitting the fire button at once again clicks into it. Now, while we're in this uh, temp control range, just to let you know, if you do want to increase or decrease the wattage, it's just that three clicks and that gets us into the where you can change or increase or decrease your power depending on however you want it there we go 65.5 obviously the uh, temperature is still settable by the uh, the up and down buttons but uh, yeah let's go back into uh, into the old canthal setting and that's about it but I mean, I think this is really, really, really useful. Oh, one thing we do get actually is if you highlight the battery, then it does give you a bunch of information about the uh, about the software and all that sort of stuff, which I thought was quite cool. I quite like that. That makes me happy. Anyway, <laughs> I think that just about covers it. Um, yeah, we've got right at the end here, we've got the memory settings, sorry. So there you've got M1, M2, M3. Um, and that really does cover all the settings on this Tesla menu. But I think it's just super easy to use and a real enjoyable product to use as well. Now, let's go up top and have a vape. Okay, so that was the up close with the Nano 120 from Tesla. And uh, I've got to say, I think, I, I think this is a great device but only for certain reasons. I like, the, the design has grown on me. Normally I hate like forced steampunk in inverted commas, um, kind of, because it's not, that's that's not steampunk, you know. Steampunk is a 
thing. It's a movement. It's a, you know, it's not just bang a few cogs on in your steampunk sort of thing. But, um, but actually, I quite like the look of it. And one of the reasons I like it is because the texture of it, because of that deep engraving or the deep etching, whatever it is, I think is really, really nice. And it feels great in the hand. The only challenge with this bare metal and this kind of this uh, textured pattern, I guess, is the fact that if you get a little bit of overdrippage going on, it's just a, it's one of those things that's weird. You don't really know it's happened until kind of you're really dripping in juice, you know? Um, um, I'll pop the tank on that I have been using this with a lot, uh, but uh, I'll explain that in a moment. But first of all, I wanted to talk about the temp control because in this uh, Druga on top of here at the moment, I've got just a, a spaced, um, a straightforward spaced coil stainless steel 316L and... Um, we are going to set, it's coming out at 0 0.2, I think it's like 7 wraps over 3.5 mil. Um, so we should have, in theory, at 450 degrees Fahrenheit, all the settings all as per normal. That should be a jolly good little vape. A uh, reasonable amount of vapor production, a little bit of warmth and all that sort of stuff. So let me show you what happens. That is not the amount of vapor. I'm getting more air in my mouth than anything else. And uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to show you, but I don't know whether it's all... Watch the, uh, watch the wattage, if you can, for a second. There we go. I don't know what it came up to there. Now, I know, obviously, that's not... I'm not kind of blowing on it or sucking on it or anything like that when I'm just pressing the button. But it, when I just press the button with the coil in, it doesn't seem to peak at that 66 watts that I've set it at. Um, it seems to be kind of struggling to get its way up there. So from a temperature control point of view, and I've mucked about with all sorts of settings. I've also tried it with um, with uh, closed coils or non-spaced contact coils. Um, I've tried it with the TCR setting and it just, it's, it's not doing it. It's not getting that quality um, temperature control vape that I would expect, which is a huge, huge shame. Now then, that's the bad news out of the way. Let me get this back into, oh, that's the wrong button. Um, let me get this back into normal mode and we'll have a little vape repose at that. Let's probably not do that at 100 watts, hey? I'm just going to move this down now to like 55.5. We'll give that a go. Shall we see where we're at with that one? With that space coil in, here we go. Much, much better. And that's at 55.5 watts as opposed to the 66 that I had it set for in temp mode. So... I think we can safely say, um, or at least in my experience with this particular device, and I've gone over it with as many different temp control scenarios as I can think of, temp control is pap on it. But that doesn't make it a bad device. And it's this it's a funny one, this one, because um, the I get a lot of feedback about... Um, about people who don't use temp control, who, you know, are over it and all that sort of stuff. So if you are one of the few people that do use temp control, particularly with science, I haven't tested it with NI200 or titanium. I don't use those sort of wires. I don't see there's any need to these days um, because if you want a good temp control experience, you can get it with stainless steel and it's much, much safer in case whichever device you use skips out of that and goes into power mode, you know? So uh, I'm a strong believer in uh, in temp mode all the way now then um like i said that does if you're if you are a temp person then no nah. but if you're not a temp control person this is a cracking little mod the fact the form factor it's quite thin this way from here to here and so that means that it's quite comfortable in the hand the curve on the top there is brilliant the angled fire button is is excellent whether you're f thumb firing it or finger firing it um i think it's really really comfy um i think in wattage or in power mode it does a spectacular job it really really does now that's it with the amit dual coil deck or the amit the amit 24 is that what it's called um with the dual coil deck on it and that's how i had it if you saw me at vape jam you may have seen me puffing away um with this exact setup because it was cracking now what happened when i said about the leak was actually i lost an o-ring in the top there or it kind of squidged itself down and that meant that overnight this just leaked an entire tank all over it 
fucking nightmare. And I thought, well, that's brilliant, isn't it? I'm going to have wrecked the mod because it was all in the battery tubes. It was all over the place. And I was, you know, mortified about the whole situation. I uh, cleaned it up best I could. I let it sit for a day or two and uh, put some batteries in it. And we're still working good as gold, which I think is great. So I really like the fact that the board is really far away from the 510. Um, it's very, very difficult for juice to get anywhere near sort of these electrical parts, whilst it could get in the battery tube with a leaking tank like I've had. Um, it, you know, the, the, the expensive bits, it's not, it doesn't really seem to be affecting, which I think is brilliant. Now then, let's just have a little two. 55.5 watts, 0.37. Spectacular. Not the quietest tank, but it's actually quite a good fade. The tank isn't getting a review, by the way, um, because it's a tank, but uh, I will talk about it in the next vlog. So, uh, yeah, let's have another little fade. So, um, so all, all in all, if you're looking for a power device, I think it delivers. It's on the button. It works. Really. I love the menu. I really do love the menu. I think it's super simple. Um, it's just unfortunate that in my experience, and yes, I have locked the resistance and unlocked it and fucked about and done all that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, it just doesn't seem to be hitting the mark when it comes to temp control. But like I say, move that away. If you're happy to buy something that doesn't have temp control, a quick Google tell tells me that, where are we? A company called Vapenology, V-A-P-E-N-O-L-O-G-Y.co.uk, in the UK seems to have it in stock at 54.99. I think they may have different colors as well. It looks as though Queen of Vapes.co.uk has it. Um, Vape Superstore has it, whoever they are. Um, but then again, oh, they, they do a kit version as well. Um, so, you know, for under 50 quid, this is a solid, so, I mean, you know, it's a fucking solid bit of metal, you know, it's a solid mod. And I really, really do like it because of that. There is weight there, you know. If you are going to put it in your in your jeans, unless you've got a belt on, you're going to be looking like one of them young crazy kids that wears their jeans around their ankles. But having said that, I like a heavy mod. You know this if you've watched me for a while. And I like a heavy mod that you know you've got in your hand. You know, that's what she said. <laughs> so that's about it, ladies and gentlemen. Under 50 quid. If you don't use it for temp control, I've had no problems with um, 24 mil atomizers going up to here. I think much more than that, 25, and you can get a very slight overhang where the curve of the top of the mod comes in. But, um, you know, you're going to be maxing out at that. Having said that, a dual battery, 120 watt mod, um, which is more than comfortable for most of the, the sort of stuff that I vape at. Um, I'm really, really happy with it, and I think it's a, I think it's a little corker, even though it's not a temp control one. So make of that what you will. And on that note, thank you very much for watching. I've been Dean the Vaping Biker. If you have liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. Make sure you hit the little bell next to the subscribe button if you want to be notified of upcoming videos. And there is so many. I have done a quite a few videos this week, and there is a lot, lot more to come just before I can get to an even handling stage on the review queue. So there's going to be a lot of good fun. So thank you very much once again, and I will see you very, very soon. Have it larger!